Hi. Welcome into the Achievable Bodies online studio, your digital virtual workout studio. My name is Becky and this is your 50 minute football class. Gym class, gym class, gym ball, Swiss ball, whatever it is you want to call it. I always say the same at the beginning of every class. If I don't know if you're working out with me for the first time, you are more than welcome. If there is anything I need to know health-wise, let me know by a private message. Otherwise, remember that you are totally responsible for what you're doing in your workout because I can't see you. So I would suggest you have a mat, some form of weights, even if that's just cans of beans or little water bottles or something, preferably not glass before somebody else asks me that one, and a drink to take on. If you don't drink during the class, which I would like it if you do, but if you don't drink water during the class, please remember, as soon as you finish the class, take on at least one glass of water. Your muscles are going to heal much more quickly and with less aches or pains from anything that you find challenging. Now when it comes to a football, I'm UK based, we have centimetres on our footballs. So 53 and 55 is from about 4 foot 10 to 5 foot 3, 4, maybe 5 pushing it. 65 is 5 foot 4, 5 foot 5 to about 5 foot 10 and then 75 is for above. So when you blow it up and you sit on it, you shouldn't be sitting in the ball, you should be sitting on the ball and your bum should be slightly higher than your knees. So it's like you're sitting on a chair at a table and instead of being completely 90 degree angle, you're slightly higher. If your bum is lower, your butt is lower than your knees, your knees take a vast amount of the pressure and I know when people have got it wrong, even when I tell them in class it's too small and they say, no, I'm all right, and then I see them start to rub their knees. So when also, if you get a new ball, do try and blow it up two or three times. Very, very rarely does that ball blow up to the right size first time. It needs to get a bit of stretch into the latex. So pump it up halfway and let it down, pump it up halfway, let it down, and then get to it. If you're never sure if you have to let it down like I do each time, a quiet little pencil mark against the wall somewhere to know where it's blown up to is a really big help. So we're going to get through this now. Anything that you struggle with, message me, let me know. We could do a private video call and I can sort out technique. Or if you're doing something and it's difficult but you think it's the wrong type of difficult, should I be feeling this? Is this what I'm meant to be feeling? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? let me know. I will try and help call out as many different adaptations and pointers and a technique as possible. But please let me know because I know I can help or 90% of the 99% of the time I can help but if I don't know I'm going to just keep doing what I do so let me know if there's anything else. Right, we are going to get into this music. I'm going to take it back to the beginning. This is a pure energy go release and I thought we'd go a little bit retro, kind of 80s style today. So taking it back to the beginning. Now some exercises when we do football, take it back to the beginning she says, some exercises when we do the football class we do every week, every class. Because they're effective, they work and they, back, they benefit you. Some we may not do for two or three weeks, all depending on what it is. So hopefully you can hear that difficult because I have this pointing at you so to me sometimes it sounds quiet then I, when I finish the class I go around the inside and go oops. First thing first as you can see slightly above not huge so if I'm down here everything collapses and you want it up. Okay so sitting on the top of the board I sit right on top of the ball circle I've got my calves almost touching the ball. I've not got this gap here, which makes you round. And right back, so I get that lumbar curve. <laughs> Figure of eight. You're looking to reignite the two natural curves you should have. Your spine is not meant to be straight, it's supposed to flow. Tilt forward and backward just from the hips. No knee rock, let me go sideways again. So I'm not rocking here, it's here. I'm pushing and pulling. Remember your posture, lift from that rib cage V, so that your 
shoulders and your head are back. Four more. And three. And two. And one. Step touch. Now, what tends to happen is people do that like a Charleston. Open from the knees. Here you go, you got it. Woo. And then if this bit kind of relaxes with a good posture, like the ball is a little smaller, you can see it's not staying in place. Heel legs. You will migrate a little bit, so anytime you need to come forward or to center off. Allow the ball to bounce. Try not to keep it still. You keep it still later on. Heel turn, heel. But this is just a little bit of a cardio warm up to get that blood pumping into the tissues. That's what we need. Out and in. Out from the knees. It's very unelegant, I know. Back to your step touch. We're going to play around with it today. Heel this. Heel, toe, heel. Now it's out to your knee. This class always goes and there's always another half hour of work on the leg lead that we can do. So I'm trying to mess it all up each week. Heel, 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 jump, jump, heel, heel, heel. So I'm rolling to the front of the ball and I'm jumping back. And again. Now this bit stays. A lot of people sit like this and then they say, oh I don't feel safe. I don't feel grounded and I can't breathe. Mark. Get that bounce, get that lovely hair bounce. Step touch. Woo. Leading with the knees, not just the ankles. Feel this. It's enough. When the heel is out, everything's up. Go back down to the bottom. Heel, toe, heel. Come on. How are we doing? How are we doing? Because 
That is going to pull on your joints. This is working your thighs. Woo! Eight more. As you come up, you should be pushing through the heels, squeezing the calves, squeezing the legs, squeezing the butt, but you're also squeezing up here. Can you lift one leg up at the end of this one? Hold. Hold. As an instructor, this is when you go, please make it today that I've got my balance. Woo. If you don't squeeze your belly, alternate singles. This is where, okay, I'm not going to keep going. I'm not going to squeeze my core, ready? Can't do it. If I don't squeeze everything, I can't get that pause. Woo. Okay, so I'm squeezing my rib cage down and pause. So what you saw then in the middle was when I didn't squeeze anything and there was no balance. Right, toe on toe. Now not toe on the floor, I know all the cheating. So I've not got my toe on the floor, I'm resting it on top of the other one. Let me go that way, that's easy. One, two, up. So if you are very dominant one side, you're going to find that wobble. Eye line, don't look down, look out, ahead. I'm looking just under the screen and that's giving me that posture. The moment my head goes down, I've lost it. Woo. Yeah. Okay, so if I'm down here, the nature of my body means my bum has to chill back. So if you look down, you've lost it. I took your hair. We can do it. Pull your belly in. One, two, squeeze. Someone pulls something tight around your midsection. Woo. Really helpful when something doesn't move across your field of vision. Three. And two, and one. Woo! Good. So if you struggle with squats or lunges, normally, because it shouldn't ever hurt the knees, but if it does hurt your knees or your back and you suffer with them, this is a beautiful way of doing it. I mean, you can see, I'm in a perfect squat position. The ball is just taking some of the pressure off. Okay, legs out. Now again, I'm not going to roll my pelvis under. I'm making sure it's under here, not up there. You can see the difference, yeah? Push your heels, release your toes. You can't wiggle your toes, your weight's in the wrong place. It's always a good pointer. Now, I'm driving through my heels so I can feel my calves and thighs, but I'm also clenching the bum and pulling up here. This exercise works your core as well as your legs. It's a beautiful way of getting your squats in. One heel up. And we always do this in this class. This is one of the top exercises we always do. Because we're trying to build your power and your strength. Helping your balance change. And if I need your twisty hips, you can level them out on the ball and feel it when it goes wrong. Four, three, up. I've got both heels up and I'm pausing at the top. Pause, pause, pause. Three, two, one. Good job. Okay, there's one more to do. If you've been doing this a few weeks, you will know this one. Now, I'm going to make sure I'm sitting on top of the ball. A lot of people roll forward. Compression, compression. You don't want that compression in your cup. This leg is going to point. So if I've got a clock on the floor, I'm pointing to 2 o'clock. Maybe 10 o'clock if you're mirroring me. And then this leg open. Now, if you need to hold the foot, don't hold it with the same arm because you twist your shoulder. Hold it here and you can have the other arm out for balance. Your choice. But if you're up, you'll do it. 
If you're down, I can't afford to be down, I'm five foot one. Driving through the heel and pulling up through the pelvic floor, squeezing the belly. Woo, down. Turn the whole leg. Don't just turn the foot because your knee will hurt. Okay? So it's got to be out to 10 or 2. Even if it's like this, you will not balance. You just won't.
Now this leg cannot be like that because you roll. You're here, we stop. It's your brain. Nearly there. Three. Two. Back. Come down. Walk the hands back. So your feet touch the floor. Right. Start on the real basic. There are about five different levels here. So, anybody that does this class, let, message me and let me know. Okay, whether you want to do more and more. I always do first three. I don't think I've taught four online yet because I can't see you. You're going to go out onto your knees, not your thighs, not your hips. It becomes obvious because you cannot do the movement if you've got it higher than your knees. Think of that structure again. So when your arms are on the floor, push out of those shoulders. Lift your belly and then the exercise is that easy. The more you collapse into your body, the harder it is. So, going out onto your knees. Now I have to roll out a bit and then walk it back with my knees. But you get that any way you can. I'm going to walk it back now until it's under my knees. I brace my shoulders and I'm going to lift my midsection. Can you see? If I'm like this, my back starts to hurt about now. If I'm lifted, I've got no back ache. Now I'm not going to move the shoulders and arms. I'm going to bring the knees to me. Three, two, one. One. Two. Three. Shoelaces. 
and I couldn't walk it back so I had to really work to hold it but really working is okay but what happens there when you do the first ones you work here the second ones go here third one goes there so you're getting the six pack group as well as that one and that one and that one and the rest right side back now I slip a lot on this so if your shoes are slipping or if you're slightly nervous, you can use a board. It's difficult because your other leg gets in the way a bit, but I'm going to break everything down. I have broken this one down for a couple of weeks. Next to the board, drape over, take your arm out. Then, if you do anything else, check that you're open. This is going to feel totally insecure. Well, push forward, then push on that foot till your hand touches the floor. Stay open. Then dig in and straight. This is your foundation stone. So if you're like that, you're screwed. <laughs> okay? Come on, shoes. Don't sit. The more you open, and the more you squeeze the whole of your left side, the side on the ball, the more your balance. Hold, pulse, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Now, I think teaching that the hardest thing is to get people to look up. Everybody wants to look at the floor, but the moment you look at the floor, your shoulder rounds down and then the ball rolls. If you're up and strong, like a star, the ball becomes solid. If you let, do this or bend your supporting leg, you feel very insecure. Drop here, push. Now, let me just get back in. I'm going to make sure I straight that leg and stay up. You can see my shoes are slipping, but I'm trying to dig in as much as I can. Woo! Five, six, seven, eight. Now, if I look at the floor in a minute, I will roll. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Whoa, keep going. Pulse. One, two, three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, I'm literally only holding on with one toe now. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Woo! It's hard when your feet are slipping. Right, we're going to grab your mat, grab your weights, put them somewhere where you can grab them, and actually test it. So when you lie down, make sure you can grab them without having to go into some sort of origami macrame. I'm not going to use them straight away, so you might as well get them now while you're up, and then you can access them as we need, rather than start a little ab section and have to get back up again. So, if you need to grab a drink, now's a good time. We usually start with our upper body, but today, I want to take it into the abs first. Now we're going to start by bringing this in 90 degrees. Okay, so what you're going to do now is take the shoulders away from your ears. Take your arms out to the side. Now do not lift the head and shoulders up. What? I want you to squeeze your abs, breathe out, and then your head and shoulders will come up. Pulse, one, two, see if you can get your hands to touch the wall, seven, eight, nine, ten, one, two, three, four, five, where are you looking? Seven, eight, nine, ten, squeeze the abs, two, put your hands on them if you want, make sure that's where you're squeezing, not lifting up your five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, only squeeze them lower. 
if you're new to me and you're wondering what I'm talking about, I have done a little video on how to do an approach because I would say 98% of people do this. I haven't used my abs at all. So I want you to crunch the muscles in your belly tight. Crunch and crunch and crunch and then your head and shoulders will come up. But they're not involved in the crunch. They simply come up because you shorten the ab muscles. Okay, we're going to try that again. You ready? Here we go. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Multitasking. One, two, three, four. Hands on your belly. Feel it contract. Come on, feel it contract. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Relax. So if you get a neck ache, Shoulder ache when you do a crunch. Revisit your technique. It's an exhale and a contraction, and only the head and shoulders come up if you shorten this. So hands on top of each other. Bring it up. Squeeze. Here. One, two. If you can stand the other hand, it would be a good idea, but bring it down. Inhale, exhale, squeeze the belly. And go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, nearly there. Seven, eight, nine, ten. And bring it down. Good job. Okay, we are going to do a quick spine twist. Check that you've got a nice aligned body, arms out. Keep it in close. Drop the knees to the right as far as you can. Don't stop here if that's comfy. Keep going, keep going, keep going. So you can only just keep the shoulder on the floor. And so the squeeze. Other side. Exhale and squeeze. Other side. Exhale and squeeze. Other side. Exhale and squeeze. One more. Good job. Now you'll exhale and squeeze. Here. Okay, so we're going to take it out now. And we're getting the backs of the ankles. Okay. And we're going to take ourselves all the way up. Now you'll notice that I'm not slamming this away at great speed because that's quite easy. But you tend to use your body's momentum rather than technique. Because what tends to happen is people go. And what they're doing is throwing from your upper back and nothing else has a choice of what it's going to do. Okay, here we go. Let's go again. Got it? Yeah? Woo! Can you believe you've done 35 minutes already? Can you be asked tonight? Yeah. Two more. Oh. One more. Woo! Okay. We're going to leave the legs there. Don't bring it in here though. I know that's nice because you can flap your feet about, but just pick it up here. This is 
where you grab those weights. We're going to test your core balance. Now all of us have balance days and non-balance days. Don't worry, if today is a non-balance day, it's not that important, you know, not really. Okay, take it up, narrow press. Right, we're going to do some rows and some flies using the ball. 
I think I'll probably have to keep the mat in so I don't have got room. But you need to make a flat shape, not this shape on the board, if that makes any sense. You will need one weight, and I will try and show it to you in that spin. If you make a good A frame, toes level, wide stance, you've got your balance. If your outside leg is in, your hips are going to get pushed out of place and you're going to struggle for balance. So, again, hold of the ball. I put the knee up and then the hand in front of it. And then I take that leg out. Now, can you see how wide I'm going? I'm stable there because my hips are level. Let me go around a bit so you can see. One, two, three. Now, if I have my legs any closer, I'm going to push my outside hip up and then the ball will roll. And that's not what we're looking to do. Squeeze between your shoulder blades. Squeeze it, come on. Two more. And let it go. Go to the other side. Now watch. Right here. A. I can't straighten that leg because it's too close. But B. It's pushing my hip up, and then everything tilts into the ball, and you lose your stability. Make sure you put your shin on the ball, not to the side on the top. You want to push down to the centre of that ball. Pull and squeeze those shoulders. And because I've got the right A frame, I feel completely balanced. Woo! Two more. One more. Now, don't, if you're not on the floor, let it roll. When you're resting on the ball, then try and lean in and drop it really close to the floor because it will pull on your back. Okay. Now you don't have to get rid of your mat. I'm having a quick shimmy with mine because I'm going to do plank. And I may have to use the wall if my shoes decide to slide. Break it down. Those of you that have been doing football with me for years, you can kind of switch your ears off a little bit because you know everything I'm going to say. But also at the same time, revisit your technique. All right. So many different ways that people get into plank. But I've had disc issues with my back. So I really like to make sure that you get into it in a safe and effective way. So my basic is upright, and don't put the bum out, the chin out, take that pressure off your lower back, arms out. See the space? Elbows, maintain the space. Slide the legs back, there's your heart height. Not here, here. Then, you're going to push through the forearms. <clears throat> now, not here, or here. Remember, you use every muscle group. Your calves are involved, your shin muscles, front and back of your legs. You're not just lifting the middle of your body. If you don't engage all of your legs and push into your heels, then you should be pushing into your heels. You're not going to get that. I see so many people that are like this, and then I push into your heels, and immediately they're there. So go again. so much easier if you've not been doing it 
that way you might struggle to relearn. But I've seen too many injuries from people that are like this, or like this. And everything is just resting on two points here and two points there. Switch everything off. One more time, guys. You know how to do it. This. Not here. Let me see those beautiful necks. Four, three, two, one. You can even rock back and forth through your heels. Elbows. And down. Good job. Okay, you ready for the fun? Now, if you're new to this class, we always have a little balance section at the end. Now, it's a lot, and if you've got a room full of 25 people doing this, it's really funny. But what I want you to think about when you're trying this is what it's challenging is the deep muscles. Okay? It's challenging your balance. It's making your body switch on. It's making it figure out which muscles overwork, which muscles underwork. There is nothing right or wrong. You know, it's not like you have to do a minute of this and you haven't got the exercise. Yes, it's fun. Yes, it's a giggle. But it's challenging for the brain and the body. And there was a good article on the radio the other day that said, Actually, it's proven that physical exercise challenges your hippocampus and for your mental health, it's really good to switch on. It switches something on. So, this is also when you know if you've got the right size ball. So the ball's too big, you can't do it. Hold it with your knees. Imagine you're on a hill and the ball wants to roll away and you're holding it with your knees. Okay. Your hands come down by your knees, not in front. And then, you're going to roll the ball forward till your knees come up. Don't try and jump on unless you're one of those circus people. And you don't try and do this. Because if you look where my body weight is, it's still there. But if I roll the ball forward, the knees are pretty much underneath my waist and belly. And you can see me wobbling. But why I'm not falling off is because my mind, my brain is sending signals to how to correct. I'm not thinking about correcting it, I'm letting my body do it. You want to come back? Roll back. Fall to the side. Once you get it, you start to improve your technique. So go for that one again. Can you see how far forward my arms are? They're not back under my body. Now some of you have been doing this for a while. You can, once you've got there, bring one hand in the middle and take one arm up. So, you're here. And then we get that triangle of stability. Then you take one arm up. But this is so 80s, this is music. There are loads of things. There's another one now when you don't have to do this with me, do what you're doing. If you do the single leg one, I always advise you start with one knee on because it's really difficult to do it the other way. I'm not sure I'm going to do this today. Yeah. Just practice, just play, just have fun, okay? Don't take yourself seriously. Just have fun. Every time you wobble, every time you come off, you're retraining, your body is sending messages, you're switching your whole body on. Right. You know, that's why kids learn, because they are prepared to learn. And they don't presume if they get it wrong the first time that they're useless at it. They just know that they've got to learn it. So we live, and we go. I'm lifting up because I'm sitting down and I'm closing my hip. So I'm lifting up to make that gap to get the rotation. Okay. 
Heather. Now making sure your ear is back over your shoulder. So. I can give you is to put your adult mind away and go with it. If the moment you relax and decide to have fun with it, you'll get it. If you're a person that has to get everything right first time, which isn't realistic, really, you might struggle a bit more. Just let go, just have fun with it. It's about getting your body and your mind fitter and stronger and healthier. And if you make a mistake, it doesn't matter. But do message me if there's anything you need to know. Please keep in touch. Please stay safe. Join the group, join the family and take care. Bye.